Okay, this is a video for Walpole numbers three, four, and five. Three and four are the proofs, but I've gotten homework turned in um, already that shows that maybe five is also going to be a problem, so we'll take a look at that too. All right, so for problem three, prove that two chords in the same circle are congruent if the arcs associated with those chords are equal. All right, so here is the picture that we have. We've got a circle. We've got two chords in that circle, A, B, and C, D. And we know that the arcs associated with those circles. So again, the arc associated with circle, I'm sorry, the arc associated with chord AB within this circle is, cor, uh, is arc AB right here. And the arc associated with chord CD is this arc CD. And we know that those two arcs are congruent, right? So our given is circle O that has the measure of arc AB equal to measure of arc CD. And again, that's the given. All right, so step two, what we're going to do here is we're going to say that, um, sorry, I'm looking at the, yeah, I just want to make sure I get the right uh, diagram here. All right, we're going to draw OA. This is, again, one of those times where he, for some reason, does draw these. OA, OB, OD, and OC. All right, so draw OA, OB, OC and OD. And the reason we can do that, two points determine a line. All right, then hopefully at this point you've seen enough of these proofs now that you can say, oh, well, our next step is to say that they're all congruent. And I'm going to do two dashes on each of those. All right, so OA, OB, OC and OD are all congruent to each other, and the reason is all radii are congruent. Okay, and then next we're going to say that I know the measure of angle AOB is equal to the measure of arc AB, and I know that the measure of angle COD is equal to the measure of arc CD. All right, this is what we talked about um, in that packet that we've been working on. He's also talked about it in the book where if we have a central angle, the measure of the angle right here, AOB, is equal to the measure of the arc. Right, that's because it's a central angle. Uh, so he's just going to say definition of the measure of an arc. Right, there are other ways that we can measure an arc, but specifically when we have a central angle like we do here, that the measure of the angle and the measure of the arc are the same. Okay, step number five. That means that the measure of angle AOB equals the measure of angle COD. Why is that true? Well, we already know that the measure of AOB and the measure of angle, I'm sorry, not AOB, the measure of arc AB and the measure of arc CD are congruent because that was part of the given right here. So this would be transitive property of equality, but we're just going to call it algebra. or we could just say substitution, but either way, it's some, an algebraic property. Okay, so then that means that this angle right here and this angle right here are congruent. Note that, that we're not saying that they're congruent because they're vertical, because they aren't necessarily. This looks like it kind of uh, is the same line, but this definitely does not. We do not know that these are vertical angles. All right, so we have to say that they're congruent because the intercepted arcs are congruent. Okay, so then now that we have that, we have that this triangle and this triangle, sorry, I'm not sure if my hand's in the way, this triangle right here and this triangle right here have to be congruent. So triangle AOB has to be congruent to triangle COD. 
In fact, these are both equilateral triangles. I'm, I'm sorry, bleh, not equilateral triangles, isosceles triangles. So as long as we get that um, included angle in the center here, it doesn't really matter if we say AOB is congruent to COD or AOB is congruent to DOC or BOA is congruent to COD. Um, as long as we've got those two sides that are congruent and that um, included angle, the lettering really could be very flexible here unlike other triangles where it's really important that we get that uh, accurate. Okay, reason, this is gonna be side, angle, side. All right, and then finally we can say that segment CD is congruent to segment AB. And the reason, CPCTC. Okay, number four. Move this back a little bit. Get more room. Okay, number four says prove that if two chords in the same circle are congruent, then the measures of the arcs associated with those chords are equal. So basically, we're just looking at the converse of the previous theorem. In the previous theorem, we knew that the arcs were congruent, and we proved that these chords were congruent. I'm sorry. We knew that the arcs had shared the same measure. We wouldn't say that they're congruent. Uh, the arcs shared the same measure, and therefore the chords were congruent. Now we're going in the opposite direction. We know that the chords are congruent, and we're trying to show that the measures of those two associated arcs are equal. All right. I feel like I'm going to have to go on the other side, but I'm ready for that. Okay, so we know that we have... Um, Circle O with chords A, B, and C, D, and we know that A, B is congruent to C, D, and that's the way my diagram is marked right here. All right, so then we also, um, um, he again, he doesn't do it in this proof, but we are going to. We're going to draw O, A, O, B, O, D, and O, C. So draw O, A, O, B, O, C, and O, D. Reason we can do that is two points determine a line. All right, step three, I'm going to go with all of them are congruent. All right, so OA congruent to OB congruent to OC congruent to OD. All radii are congruent. Okay, same thing as last time, kind of. Uh, we now know that these two triangles are congruent. Before we knew it because these two angles were congruent, but now we know it because all three sides are congruent. So we're going to say that triangle AOB is congruent to triangle COD. But this time, our reason is side, side, side. All right, so if we know that they're congruent by side, 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 we know then that angle COD is congruent to angle AOB. Reason would be CPCTC, CPCTC. So close, I almost made it. Um, once we know that the angles are congruent, we know that the measure of angle COD equals the measure of arc CD. I'm going to write the reason here. I'll write the rest of the statement on the other side just because I'm out of room. The reason is definition of the measure of arcs. Right. The other part of this that we're going to write on the other side is the measure of angle AOB is equal to the measure of arc AB. So I'll give you just a second here if you want to copy that down before I flip. Okay, so then up top here we'll continue with step number six. That's the measure of angle AOB. Sorry, 
equals the measure of arc AB. And again, we had the reason on the other side. All right, and then finally, we can say the measure of arc AB is equal to the measure of arc CD. And the reason is algebra. All right, if we've got the measure, let me flip back here. We've got these two angles congruent, and we've got those two angles, sorry, let me move down. We've got these two angles congruent, in other words, their measures equal each other, and we've got um, AO, uh, COD congruent or equal to the measure of COD equal to the measure of CD and the measure of AOB equal to the measure of arc AB then just by transitive property of equality uh, or substitution we can say that the measure of the arcs are equal and again we would just the easiest thing to do sorry <laughs> looking at my paper not at the screen um, we would just say that's algebra Okay, and then problem number five, which is an add-on here. If a chord of a circle is six feet long, what is the smallest area that circle might be? What is the largest area that circle might be? So the smallest area that circle could be, so let's just think about this. The longest chord is going to make, if the longest chord or the diameter is six feet, that's the smallest possible um, circle that we could get. If we had a six foot cord, let's say, let's say this were six foot, then our longest cord, the diameter, would have to be way bigger than that. And so our area would be bigger on this one. Again, my circles are not drawn to scale here. Um, but if we had a six foot cord that's way out here, then this has to be much longer than that. So our smallest area is going to come when our largest cord is six foot and it will get increasingly larger. The area will get increasingly larger the farther we move that away from the diameter, right? If we were to say that this were a six foot cord right here, imagine how big the diameter would have to be if this were six foot. So our smallest area is going to come from when we put the diameter, the largest cord, as six feet. Right. So if we try and find the area of this circle, we know that the formula for area is pi r squared. Right. Don't be tricked by this. Remember that that 6 is not the radius, it's the diameter. So our radius is actually 3. And so we're going to say that our area is 9 pi uh, feet squared. Right. So that's the area of the smallest circle, or the smallest area. Uh, where there is a cord of six feet long. Now, you might start to suspect that something weird is going on here. Let me draw a better circle here. Let's say I had a circle like this. I'll try and draw it so maybe it's a little bit proportional to the other one that we've drawn. And let me put this in as our six foot one. All right, clearly that area is going to be much bigger than that. Right? I'm not sure what it's going to be, but I know it's going to be bigger than that. Let's go crazy here, and let's draw it so that our six foot... is now down here. All right, I'm trying to make that six foot segment look the same length in each of them. I'm not sure if I'm being successful, but again, the area here is going to keep getting larger and larger um, as we move from this one the smallest possible circle that we can have with a six foot cord. This one's bigger, this one's bigger. There's no reason why I can't keep drawing bigger and bigger and bigger circles with this six foot cord in it. So what we're, when they ask the question, what is the largest area that the circle might be? There is no largest area. We could continue to draw larger and larger circles with a six foot cord where eventually, again, I'm gonna draw this smaller because I have no room to do it. The, the two endpoints of the cord might be that close together on a really big one and still be six foot long. So the smallest area is nine feet, uh, I'm sorry, nine pi feet squared, but there is no largest area. You could continue to make larger and larger circles that still have a six foot cord, but have an infinitely large area. So smallest is that there is no largest. Okay, thanks.